SpaceX has been plagued by problems with the Raptor engine that could cost Elon Musk billions. After spending countless resources on developing the Raptor, the company has struggled to replicate the success of its Merlin engine, a massive setback that could ground the Starship for years. But is the Raptor solely responsible for the Starship's troubles? Stay tuned as we discuss the craft's recent static fire test, how the Raptor performs compared to the Merlin, and how it has overcome challenges during its development. On August 6th, an exciting phase of the Starship program kicked off as SpaceX's Super Heavy Booster 9 went through an important testing stage. This involved a static fire test where the booster remained stationary while the water deluge system was activated for added safety. The action started at 1 p.m. in the local time zone with SpaceX loading propellant into the booster. Within just one hour, the team managed to completely fill up the oxygen tank and also partially fill the methane tank with these essential propellants. Right after that, the engine chill procedure began. This step involves letting the super cold propellants flow into the engine parts. This helps to cool down the components, which is crucial to avoid sudden temperature changes that could happen when the main super cold propellants are injected into the combustion chamber with high pressure for ignition. To enhance safety measures, two systems were put into action. First, the fire extinguisher and detonation suppression systems were activated. This system uses high pressure nitrogen gas and water to cleanse the launch mount area. Following this, the water deluge system was engaged. This system involves releasing a large volume of water beneath the launch mount. The purpose is to divert and absorb the energy generated by the 33 powerful Raptor engines of the Super Heavy Booster. Booster 9 proceeded to ignite all 33 of its engines, but unfortunately four of them shut down earlier than anticipated during the test. Initially planned to run for 5 seconds, the static fire test concluded after only 2.74 seconds. SpaceX has not disclosed the exact reason behind the untimely shutdown of the engines. The way SpaceX initiated the Raptor engines for startup in the recent static fire test could potentially be a factor contributing to the problem. The engine issue during the test brings up some important inquiries about the dependability of the current version of Raptor engines. This issue is noteworthy as during the first integrated flight test, eight engines on Booster 7 experienced shutdowns at different points during the flight stages. Despite several months of development and numerous test fires at the McGregor test facility, the Raptor engines are still grappling with this recurring challenge. A lot of people think that developing the Raptor engine should be relatively easy for SpaceX, given their track record of creating the highly dependable Merlin 1D engine. The Merlin 1D has been the reliable powerhouse behind the Falcon 9 rocket. On the other hand, concerns are being raised about encountering issues with the Raptor engines at this advanced stage of development. It's worth taking a moment to consider whether worries about the reliability of the Starship should be taken seriously. First, let's focus on the Merlin 1D engine. It has become a symbol of top-notch engineering, having been used in hundreds of Falcon 9 missions throughout the years, showcasing its remarkable performance and consistency. In the year 2023, we've witnessed a Merlin-powered launch around every four days. Remarkably, there have been no issues encountered so far. Nevertheless, it's important to note that the early days of the Merlin 1D engine weren't without their fair share of challenges. These ranged from difficulties in static fire testing to instances of engine failure during flight. The journey to achieve its current success was marked by overcoming numerous obstacles. It's worth highlighting that the Falcon 9's Merlin 1D engine, while still intricate, is significantly less complex in its design compared to the Raptor engine. This distinction is noteworthy because the Raptor engine represents a groundbreaking advancement as the first ever full flow stage combustion cycle engine to be utilized in flight. Furthermore, despite the initial hiccups, the reliability of the Raptor engine has seen significant improvements. For example, let's talk about Starship serial number eight, the craft that made history as the first to successfully complete a 12 kilometer flight. In the earlier days, the Raptor engine faced a series of troublesome engine issues that are now fortunately no longer a concern. At that time, it was quite common for engines to be replaced after nearly every single static fire test. This was the standard procedure for the Starship program during that phase. Now let's delve into a comparison between Booster 7 and Booster 9. Interestingly, SpaceX managed to successfully complete a static fire test with Booster 7. So the question arises, why is Booster 9 encountering difficulties in its testing process? To unravel this mystery, let's examine the test campaign of Booster 7 in greater detail. This journey was a roller coaster ride of successes and setbacks. It all began with an unsuccessful spin prime test, which ended in an explosion, necessitating extensive repairs by SpaceX. Consequently, 
the overall campaign had to be paced down, progressing cautiously by incrementally testing a growing number of engines. There were further steps involving spin prime static fire trials for individual engines, a process that was repeated to achieve a three engine test configuration. Yet even in this arrangement, one engine exhibited reluctance to perform as expected. After four more spin prime tests, Booster 7 achieved success in testing seven engines, followed by 14 engines. The culmination of this endeavor was the eagerly anticipated 33 engine static fire test. However, during this significant test, two engines faced difficulties and didn't pass. What can we learn from all of this? Rocket engineering is an intricate and unpredictable endeavor, riddled with challenges. Every test, regardless of whether it ends in failure or success, plays a crucial role in advancing toward perfection. It's an evolutionary process, marked by incremental progress. With Booster 9, the approach shifted. The test campaign unfolded rapidly, driven by ambitious goals. Despite having conducted only a single cryo test and a spin prime test, SpaceX aimed for a monumental leap with the 33 engine test. To truly appreciate this, let's put it in perspective. Firing 29 out of the 33 engines is not just impressive, it's an astonishing feat of rocket engineering. This accomplishment gains even more significance when we recall the initial struggles that Booster 7 faced with just three engines, but there's even more to consider. The engines mounted on Booster 9 aren't newly manufactured units. Instead, they span an extensive range of serial numbers from Raptor 73 to Raptor 186. And this represents a staggering difference of more than 100 serial numbers. Just think about the evolution, the adjustments, and the refinements that could have taken place across this range of 100 engines. Each iteration could potentially have different timing tolerances, nuances, and characteristics. Interestingly, some of these engines even share a lineage with those present on Booster 7. This presents SpaceX with a formidable challenge, orchestrating the operation of 33 engines, each of which is subtly distinct in terms of its construction and capabilities. Managing this array of engines, each with its unique attributes, requires intricate coordination and understanding. The complexity lies in fine-tuning and harmonizing these variations to work seamlessly together, making the successful execution of these tests all the more remarkable. Two critical aspects deserve attention here. Firstly, SpaceX has indicated the implementation of a new firing sequence. This adjustment might revolve around meticulous fine-tuning and achieving precise synchronization down to the smallest fractions of a second. It's worth noting that even the slightest divergence from the intended sequence can disrupt the entire ignition process. Secondly, it's prudent to exercise caution before hastily attributing the issues to the Raptor engines themselves. The setbacks might be linked to multifaceted factors beyond the engines alone. The reason behind the premature shutdown of the engines could be a bottomless pit. It's akin to exploring a complex puzzle with numerous potential pieces. The possibilities are extensive. Was it a minor glitch involving the quick disconnect arm responsible for initiating the Raptor Boost engine's spin-up? Could there have been an internal system hiccup related to the spin-up process itself? Additionally, complexities arise from the intricate manifold that interconnects all these engines to multiple tanks simultaneously. Any issue with fuel flow could be influenced by this complex network of connections. Starship is an intricate symphony composed of tens of thousands of individual parts. In the event of a test ending prematurely, any single one of these components could potentially be responsible for the interruption. Pinpointing the exact cause within this complex orchestration is no straightforward task. It's important to remember that an early shutdown of the Raptor engines doesn't automatically imply they are inherently unreliable or flawed. Viewing the situation from an external standpoint, the intricate details necessary to comprehend what precisely transpired remain beyond our grasp. Only SpaceX possesses the relevant data to understand what happened, and given their faith in the Starship program and the Raptor engine, it is safe to assume things will only get better from here. We want to hear your thoughts on the matter. Do you think the Raptor is unreliable, or will the engine get better in the following iterations? Please let us know in the comments below.